What's up everyone, it's Johnny from Jettle and today I'm going to be breaking down a Band 6 thesis statement for the 2023 HSE Common Module question for 1984. So here's the question for the 2023 Common Module essay. A text can ignite ideas about collective human experiences that enrich our view of the world. To what extent do you agree with this statement in relation to your prescribed text? The thing we need to note first of all here are the key words of the question. And in this case, the key terms, not just important words, the key terms that you need to use all throughout your essay, basically every sentence, especially in your introduction and topic sentences, are collective human experiences, enrich and view of the world. And if I had to limit it to two phrases here, I would say it's collective human experiences. It's, it's gone, the question goes out of its way to specify a type of human experience. Collective, not individual, collective. You can still talk about individual, but you have to emphasize collective. And then we have view of the world. That's the second one. View of the world, your worldview, your perspective. And it's talking about our view of the world, our being the responder, the audience, the reader, whatever's appropriate to the text type you're doing. In this case, because it's 1984, you could talk about the reader, but you could more broadly talk about the responder. So. What's going to happen to the responder's worldview or the way they look at the world, their perspective, their understanding of the world, their understanding of humans or the human experience? What's going to happen to it? This question is suggesting that by reading the text and studying it and understanding the ideas about collective human experiences like conformity or collective control, the fact that Big Brother controls everyone, the fact that everyone experiences this level of totalitarian manipulation and this exploitation of power. What do we take away from that? How does that enrich? How does that transform our understanding of the world? Maybe it increases our awareness of totalitarian governments so that we can prevent them from taking away our freedoms. That's a key point. That's a key purpose behind the text. You need to think about what the impact of the text is on the responder. That's what it's getting at when it talks about changing our view of the world. Okay. And you need to think, how does it change your perspective? Does it make you more aware of something? Does it make you more likely to question or challenge the motivations of a government? Does it make you more likely to protect traditional familial values, for instance? Because part of the problem in the text is that everyone becomes individualized. The family unit is separated. Everyone serves the government. Everyone serves Big Brother. So think about those ideas. And let's now get into a band six thesis statement and break it down. Hey everyone, it's Johnny from Jettle. And if you wanna check out state rank examples, band six analysis, step-by-step -step guides to constructing the perfect essays, craft of writing pieces, whatever it is that you need for your English exam, then go to jettle.com. We've put everything in one place for you so that you don't need to look any further to get everything you need to succeed in your exams. And if you wanna submit a draft and get expert marking, or you wanna use our marking tools to get specific suggestions on how you can improve your essays, your creative writing pieces, anytime, anywhere, make sure you sign up to Jedi. It's less than $10 per week. So here is a band six thesis statement for 1984. In his prose fiction novel, 1984, 1949, George Orwell represents the oppressive collective human experience of psychological control, which threatens individual freedom. In order to enrich the responder's unconscious view of the post-war world with the dystopian potential of totalitarian leadership. Now, this is quite a long sentence. And that's deliberately so, because in this case, we're just having a look at a one sentence thesis statement. In reality, you might address these elements over two sentences within your introduction. But for the purpose of this example, I wanted to show you all of the possible things you could be doing to expand on the key terms of the question while responding to the question in a meaningful way. So how does the sentence begin? It begins with a very kind of standard beginning. You, you don't have to use this particular sentence structure to begin your thesis. You could do something more creative. You could do something relating to form. You could say it is through the prose fiction form or it is through the dystopian genre, for instance. But in this case, we just wanted to start by saying in his prose fiction novel, we're introducing the full form of the text, prose fiction novel. We're then introducing the text with its full title. And you should always do that when you first introduce your text, 1984, not with the digits, 
full words. And then here we have the date of publication in brackets. And again, you only have to do this once when you first introduce the text. In his prose fiction novel, 1984, then we get into the question. George Orwell, full name for the author, don't just say Orwell, say George Orwell, but you can say Orwell every time thereafter, represents, and this is where, where it's important, the oppressive collective human experience. Notice how the green there shows the collective human experience link, but the orange is showing the expansion. Look at how we've added more to the question. Look at how we're answering the question, not just repeating the question. And the way we've done it there is we've asked ourselves, collective human experience? What type? What type of collective human experience is relevant to this text as a whole? What is the relevant collective human experience that I want to talk about, that I argue about, in my essay. And of course, you've got draft materials, you've got a structure, you've got key points you wanna make. So make sure you think about the collective human experience that lines up with your understanding of the text, that lines up best with your draft materials. And that way it's gonna be way easier for you to preserve a lot of the material that you've prepared while still answering the question effectively. So we've asked, what type of collective human experience? What type is such a powerful question because it forces you to use an adjective, a describing word, which allows you to expand a little bit already on the key word. So in this case, we're saying not just collective human experience of psychological control, we're saying an oppressive collective human experience. So we're giving the question, we're giving the response some flavor. You're already telling me the type. So I get immediately an understanding that this is quite a negative human experience that we're confronted with. And your thesis statement should always be about the core problem that your text is about. What is the core struggle or conflict? What is the problem that it's exploring? The complexity of life, the complexity of the human experience that's coming out. So it's always good to look at a thesis statement through the lens of the core problem of the text, because then that will guide you along the right path here. So that's why we went with oppressive collective human experience. And then what we did after, which is really important, is we used the word of to force ourselves to actually write a specific human experience. The last thing you wanna do in a thesis statement is just repeat the question. You wanna actually say the specific experience so you can provide an answer. This is in the very first sentence. So don't just say all represents collective human experiences. No, we're gonna say the core overall human experience, and then we can get into lots of specific collective experiences throughout our essay at the relevant points in time. But here we're saying it's an oppressive collective human experience of psychological control, because that is one of the key ideas here. But the word of was key. So when you get a key word of the question, use of after it, and then fill in the blank with the most relevant concept that would relate, not just to the question, but to your argument, the argument that you've been preparing in your drafts. We then add this little bit after with commas, and it gets a little bit clunky here, but I wanted to illustrate the point that sometimes you need to do more than just say what the human experience is. Okay, it's an oppressive experience and it's about psychological control, but what's the actual significance of that? Well, the comma there allows us to then say the so what part. Like, so what that it's a, an oppressive experience of control? What about, why is that important? Why is that significant? Well it threatens individual freedom. Okay, great, so in a few words, we've captured why we should care about this collective human experience. So you can add commas, add a little clause in like that, if you feel comfortable doing so. Otherwise, you could just omit that, and it would be a little bit more vague, but you can get more specific in the next few sentences of your introduction. And then we say, in order to enrich, this is where we bring in the word enrich, always prioritize the key words of the question over any other word. Don't worry about synonyms. Just use the actual words of the question, but in a meaningful and specific way. So we're gonna use the word enrich. We're not gonna say in order to reveal. Why would I say reveal when the question has used the verb enrich? So we're gonna say in order to enrich the responders. Now we're saying who is it enriching? In the question it says to enrich our view of the world. You can actually define the our. You can say it's the responders or the readers. You could say our as well, but why not show that you're actually defining the our in a very general sense, but that will also show a little bit more sophistication. And after we say the responder, we say the responder's unconscious view of the world. Not just their view of the world, because that would just be repeating the words of the question. Give me the type of worldview that responders might have that George Orwell was worried about. He's worried that people aren't aware of the dangers that confront all of us 
under totalitarian leadership. He wants us to be more aware of how our freedoms are being taken away and how easily the truth can be manipulated and how our psychology can be controlled. So these are things that can go unnoticed. And that's the whole point of the text, right? So this is where you need to use your understanding of the text to fill in the blanks. And you don't have to be filling in the blanks the way I filled in the blanks. You just need to do it in a way that suits your understanding of the text, okay? So here I'm, I've chosen to use the adjective unconscious because that's who Orwell is trying to wake up. So the responder's unconscious view of the post-war world. Now this is quite crafty here. The key phrase of the question was view of the world, which is like worldview. And you could say worldview and not view of the world. You can be flexible with the precise use of the key terms. Like if it says collective, you can say collectively. If it says view of the world, you can say worldview. If it said power, you could say powerful. Just make sure that you have the kind of root of the word in there. You've still got to have the core word there, but you can use derivatives. You can use other forms of that word, not synonyms, but other forms of that word. And what we've done with view of the world, this is the really crafty part. We've split that up so that we can actually say something specific because what you're going to be tempted to do, especially when you've identified a key phrase that has quite a few words in it, you're going to be tempted to just reuse that every time. And it's really hard to give some flavor or add some specific insights when you have a key term that's quite a few words long. The shorter the key term, like ideally one word, the easier it is to unpack it. Whereas if you have view of the world, it gets tricky to break it up. So what I've done is I've broken up view and world here to give a type of worldview while also saying the type of world contextually that we're in. We're in the post-war world. So I've actually split up the key phrase view of the world into view and world. And that's something you can look to do if you got a phrase like that that seemed to be a key term. So it's an unconscious view of the post-war world. Why post-war? Because that was the context, 1949. It was after World War II. And this is the really important thing. When it talks about enriching our view of the world, we need to ask ourselves, how is it enriching our view of the world? What insight is it enriching us with? And what I put here is, it enriches the responder's view of the world with, it's giving us a deeper understanding of the dystopian potential of totalitarian leadership. It's telling us how bad things can get. That's what dystopian potential means. Dystopian means it's like a nightmarish reality. That's the genre of the text. And then potential means how bad it can get, right? So it's the dystopian potential of totalitarian leadership. So I've actually said here, that's what the responder is being enriched with. That's the idea. That's, that is the understanding we're getting. But notice again, it's in orange, all of these specific parts that have been added on in addition to the keywords of the question. That's what makes it a band six thesis. It uses the key terms of the question. It separates them and it shows a relationship between them. It doesn't just bundle collective human experience and worldview together. It splits them. It doesn't bundle the terms together. It doesn't just say collective human experiences and worldview. It actually says you have these collective human experiences explored or rather in this case, just choose the one core one. So you don't list things. The last thing you want to do is list. Band four responses, band three, band four, even band five sometimes, will just list off experiences here because the question used a plural. It said experiences with an S, but it's your job to get specific on that. So that's why we've just chosen one core human experience and gone into detail on it. That's a much better way of approaching it than listing. Over the course of your introduction and the course of your essay, you'll talk about heaps of different experiences, but in no single sentence should you ever list multiple. Get into one of them and provide more detail about it. So you're getting more specific. That's what the band six responses do. But once again, to finish this up, band six response will expand in all the ways I've shown you on the keywords of the question while still using the keywords of the question to make it really easy for the marker to see how you are responding to the question. So I hope that helps. Make sure if you need more help with this, check out Jettle's resources jettle.com, lots of resources on these texts, including 1984 and many others that will help you with essay examples and analysis. And if you need help with marking, go to Jedi. That's on jettle.com. Check out Jedi. It is our teacher trained expert model of marking. You can get feedback instantly from our AI model, or you can ask our team of real life experts. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you like this video. If you enjoyed this video, if it gave you some value, please like this video and I will see you in the next one.